Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Local Chat. It's episode, I believe, 77. And we are here to talk about the video games. Joining me today, as always, is one Ian Gibson. My hiccups went away. I didn't do anything, but they're gone. Scared them right out of you. Stage fright. (laughs) Uh, Also joining us from the great state of New Jersey, it's Kyle Bailey. Hi. You, I mean... We're both, you know, from the great state of New Jersey, so. It's unfortunate. I mean, I'm not from it, so let's not slum me uh, like that. Yeah, there's Uh, a word in there that is doing a lot of work. Yeah, it's a little rude. South Jersey's pretty great, I think. You know what? I would agree with that. I I wouldn't say nice. It is not... It is not the bad part of Jersey. It, yeah, put the, it that way. the the yeah. part that people always make fun of in Hollywood is North Jersey, and it's because you can see it from New York City. You cannot yeah. see South Jersey from New York City, not unless you got a telescope. Um, yes. folks, we're here to talk about video games. We're here to talk about all sorts of things. It's a little bit of a light news week, as they call it in the biz. Uh, but we're gonna make up for it for just being, you know, entertaining. Um. <laughs> Which is not true. I really um, hope we end early because for some godforsaken reason, you are always strict about time. So even if we're having a fantastic conversation, you're like, move on, move on. So I hope the opposite happens this week where you're like, it's fine. We can talk long and just zero interesting conversations happen. And then you get so what too. you deserve. I hope my CPU doesn't explode because uh, it, it every time I click on the Google Doc, it shoots down to 60 and then right back up to 100%. And I don't know what's happening. I, yeah, I wouldn't expect Chrome, Chrome to be CPU. That should be memory. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had an issue with my computer for a while and I've I've changed, completely changed graphics cards. I think it's time to change CPUs. I think I might just need... Didn't, didn't that's, you that's do right, that yeah. recently? No, I, that's the one thing I didn't change. I swapped it over. I changed motherboard everything else but i still have these issues like flickering icons and just like chugging that's 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 a windows 10 issue i have that as too and i've and i've gone down that rabbit hole it's some weird like windows explorer issue where it'll like intermittently refresh yeah i don't i don't know what it is i have a lot of issues with premiere too when i try to do hardware acceleration premiere but it's premiere yeah i don't use premiere anymore (laughs) it's just all over davinci resolve come on yeah, 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 DaVinci Resolve. Yeah, we're all there for that. Um, anyways, uh, first we've got to talk about the games we've been playing. Um, I'm going to go first because I literally have not been playing anything this week. Um, I've, I, Ian's uh, behest, I picked up everybody's golf. Um, I need you to talk me down, Ian. Am I, am I good at everybody's golf or is everybody in that game terrible at everybody's golf well you can't you can't really compare yourself against the ai because it's only like what five percent of the ai that's actually pretty good at it true but that being said that game is kind of challenging so like what like how, like in tournaments what what are you roughly averaging in tournaments like a minus 10 or 11 yeah that like I'm getting right, eagles especially... pretty often and birdies. I rarely, I rarely yeah. get above par. I r- usually yes. hit par, but I also chalk that up to I play a lot of golf games. Over oh, the yeah. years, I mean, just to be clear, like the reason why I'm with you on this that this doesn't mean that that, that it's easy or that yeah, it, it means you're good at golf because this is not a simplistic golf game. Like like something that took me an hour, like probably an hour or two of playing to get used to was if you're not on the green, let's say you hit the ball in the fairway, right? And then you aim it right at the cup and there's zero wind and you hit the ball and it still goes flying left or right, even though your shot was perfect. It's because there's a little icon in the bottom right that says, oh, by the way, the fairway is tilted 15 degrees. So if Mm. you hit the ball even perfectly, it's going to go to the right. And so like it has all those little tiny mechanical details in it that will skew your shot. And so... I I no I don't think the game is incredibly easy. I think you're just good at golf games. Well, that is lovely to hear, because um, I made all that up. No, I didn't. But I, I agree with you. The hardest part about that entire game is putting. I like. 
Oh no, putting I find kind of easy. It's like, not that hard. I feel like I'm well, terrible. I like I've gotten a lot better at reading the green as they call it, but it's it like half the time I'm glad when I don't reach the like nice green cuz then I can chip it in and it always feels more satisfying, but all that aside, that game is extremely fun. Oh, I love it. It just yeah. takes too it's long on. to unlock everything. Yes, I timed it. It took me 4 hours to get to the second golf course. But that being wow. said, that means the game is so good that I played one golf course <laughs> for four hours. Like, it's that good. And it's yeah. on PlayStation Plus. Is it? I don't know if it's only on premium or not, but it's it's. I think it's, it's great. on the, yeah, because it's a PS4. I think it's on the first tier of it. Um, does, uh, what was I going to say? Does, oh, did you do the, the tournaments on Sirius? Yes, I did. Okay, yeah. okay. That makes it even worse. Yeah. Like you get a little bit more XP on Sirius. Yeah. Um, which but, um, it's funny because cause I think the interesting thing is that I, I'm pretty good at putting in the game, but I'm realizing it's not because I have like figured it out or because I know some secret. I'm realizing it's basically intuition. Like, I just, I don't know how. This doesn't translate from real world to the game, but somehow that green system, I can read it perfectly, and I'm like, I'm going to go one and a half grid squares right, and I'll be perfect, and I'm great at it. But the thing I'm not good at is something that sounds like you're good at, which is the chipping it in, in a way, because I can never quite read the variation between the wind, the lie of the green, and then nailing the impact. Basically, you have to get all three of those right in order for you to line up exactly with the pin uh, yeah. when you when you hit the ball in the air. And I'm never it's it's rare for me to be exactly on. I'm usually close, but it's rare for me to be uh, exactly on. So so I think that's another testament to how great this game is, is that there's enough mechanical depth that you're finding the putting difficult. I'm finding it easy, but then we're opposite on on the chipping and the general air ball control. Fantastic yeah. game. It's great. Yeah, it's, it's really good. It's I'm really free. enjoying it. I made a hideous creation, and then I was like, ah, this... Uh, actually, I unlocked the little boy body, um, and so I switched to that. <laughs> I switched to the little boy, and I made the head as big as possible, and then I went to putt, and I couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> Which, thankfully, there's a see-through character button, but I said that's oh it. So God. I went and actually made myself, and Karen thought it looked just like me, but a little too skinny. Oh. Which is I perfect. did... Uh... I did a, I did like a, like a mid thirties. No, let's say like mid forties, like bland office man with like a bad comb over <laughs> and balding. But then like, like 30 minutes into the game, you unlock, you beat like a schoolgirl, So you get her outfit. So he's just wearing a dress shirt button up. And then he's just wearing a schoolgirl a school oh. girl skirt and like uh and like dress socks and loafers so he and i didn't touch his animation but for some reason he does his hips a lot when he's dancing so it's this weird like 40 year old office worker in a schoolgirl squirt it's a crazy. true feminist yes true true feminist um that's hilarious i really enjoy that Sp spreadsheets up top feminism down <laughs> below classic um Sorry, I'm just rearranging some windows here. Um, I think I found the culprit, but I don't know how to fix it. So, I think I think we're good for right now. If the stream's good, I'll check stream. Yeah, it's it's currently telling me that um, my video settings for OBS Ninja are at 4K, and I don't I don't know why. Oh, were you recording in 4K and you forgot to switch your switch your profile? No, but it yeah, I guess I could have, but. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. I'm stream checking the looks stream. Solid. I think I think we're okay. Stream looks solid. So yeah, my computer. Shut your mouth. Not. Tell me. Uh, anyway, sorry. Um, yes. Uh, infamous Second Son, also infamously on the PlayStation uh, subscriber program. I downloaded it. I installed it. The main character is Troy Baker. Um, Ugh. But it's literally Troy Baker. Troy Baker. Um, yeah. You know, I was thinking about this this week. Just uh, my problem is not with Troy Baker. It's that everybody cast him as Troy Baker. It's and the, that's, that's yeah, too much. Like he's a he's good actor. North. He's a good voice. Um, yeah. And honestly, this was very early and earlier in his career. So I shouldn't be annoyed at it. But going back, he is the main character and the main character is modeled after him as well. So it's oh, like. That's weird. It's like a double whammy. 
Uh, and on top of that, the game is very old school, feels very old school uh, open world RPG. Um, I haven't made it to like the main area yet. I just like finished the prologue, I think. Um, also uses the touchpad a lot because I guess it was a PS4. Game? It was a PS4 exclusive when it when it came out. I, the big thing I it remember was early from that game. Too. Yeah, yeah, it was very early. The big thing I remember from that was like particles. They were like, we yes. have particles. We could do so many Yellow. particles now. Yeah, yeah. particles. <laughs> so it like it's okay. The gameplay is kind of cool. The story is kind of neat. Uh, but I, I don't think I'm going to keep playing it. I think I'm going to. It's just like not the right time. It's not the right time in my life uh, for this game. For a mediocre <laughs> old open world game. For a mediocre op old open world game. Uh, I got to save all that energy for The Witcher 3 when it comes to next gen consoles. <laughs> so uh, a game I played a little bit of today for work. And I was like, oh, I could just keep playing this game. Actually... I need to praise The Witcher 3 for a second. I installed it on Steam. It had my save from 2015, and it started yeah. giving me tutorials again. Oh, Ooh, like it was like, hey, you haven't played this nice. in a while. Yeah, so I couldn't tell if it did that because of that, or there was just a glitch with me reinstalling it. But I thought that was kind of neat, and I was like, it was very helpful when I just needed to get to a place to to um record something quick. It was just like, hey, do this. This is how you call your horse. This is how you fast travel. I was like, thank you. So I like quickly went and did that. And I was like, I'm kind of looking forward to trying to get back into that game again, um, which will be nice. Uh, and that's about it. I was playing RimWorld right before this um, <laughs> stream, uh, which means the next six weeks or so, I'll be talking about it. So let's all get excited. I, um... Let's shout it out. This is not a promise. I just, you mentioned RimWorld and I sent you a crazy link where there is now RimWorld to Twitch uh, integration via various mods and systems. So there was somebody playing RimWorld and they were getting GIFs and events triggered by their chat. You know, like their chat just being like, surprise, here's a, a, a really cool gun. Surprise, cannibals are attacking you, <laughs> you know? And they just turned into a chaotic stream. Just, just one of I would those cool that. things where... You're taking a bad game and making it slightly better. Wow. Much. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's that's cool, though. That's like that's next gen gaming in my mind. Next gen gaming here next gen on gaming. some pixel uh, moving on. Uh, Kyle, please tell me about Hell Let Loose and how much you love playing with all of us. It honestly is very fun. I, I played a couple rounds uh, of Warzone with some friends and the Aside from just the mechanical differences, I love the pace of Hell Let Loose so much more because it's like, even when you're losing, you're still kind of having fun, even if it's a little frustrating and you understand like why you're losing. Like, of mm -hmm. course, this point's being overrun and yet I still keep warping back to this garrison. I know I'm going to die, but, you know, I just I'm going to try my best to you know, help clear it out. Whereas in Warzone, you know, you get sniped from like 500 yards by a 12 year old and you're like, <laughs> why does why is this happening um it's summer it's summer they it's don't have summer school yeah right it's now. true um <laughs> that, that's sh you know i should have i should have remembered um but yeah hell let loose is super fun and playing with you guys is great i like getting to try out the, the different classes uh and then just when you have like a really good run it just feels super good like oh, like yeah i think you just not just mechanically but like you understand why things are functioning the way they are and like yeah it can be like a little glitchy sometimes but it's it's just super fun and i i really enjoy playing it i yeah, i don't it, know if i could play it by myself but with other people for sure yeah it's definitely one of those games where it really relies upon some teamwork or at least communication yeah. so mm -hmm. hopping into a server by yourself the community is very welcoming but at the same sure. time you're always rolling the dice or you end up in a squad that's silent or filled with assholes versus people that want to communicate. But I think I think just to to piggyback off what you said, Kyle, I think for me, what I really like about games like Hell Let Loose and um Squad and Project Reality, et cetera, is like battlefield literacy in a way. Like if you think about um games like Battlefield and Call of Duty, et cetera, it doesn't matter if it's a team based mode. It doesn't even really matter if there are objectives or rush it tends to just be a giant team deathmatch, you know, yeah. because 
they've introduced so many like squad deployment mechanics, et cetera, that people are constantly assaulting you from all angles. And so you like, you may have an objective, but it doesn't really matter direction, et cetera. But in games like hell let loose, it's like, no, we need to grab this intersection to block them off. Like, like we've had plenty. Um, We did it for like 20 minutes the other day in that one match where basically we were, we were off to the side of the objective, like 300 meters looking down a series of roads and just taking guys out because there was one or two squads and a tank that were trying to push the objective. And like, we could tell this is the front line. They are flanking us. We are going to hold the flank while the rest of our team holds the objective. And like, that doesn't happen in battlefield call of duty etc because those games are all focused on making the meat grinder as grindy and meaty as possible and then you lose any sense of front line rear line flanks etc and it just yeah. it it's it's mil sim for the masses and i love it yeah no it's great and it looks really good too um every once in a while you get a little stutter but uh, mm-hmm. i think that was more networking the, the issues that we had um yeah and then second game well first game on my list is norco have you guys heard of this yeah Checked it out norco norco is a i'm gonna read this right off of the uh the website norco is a sci-fi southern gothic gothic adventure that immerses the player in the sinking suburbs and verdant industrial swamps of louisiana's petrochemical hinterlands uh that is a mouthful but it wow. is a point and click narrative adventure game with some some like not quick time events but just little little ways you can interact with the world um i've only played it for about an hour but i'm already can feel myself being drawn into the the story which is really 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 well done there's a little bit of character hopping there's a little bit of uh um time jumping as far as where you are in the story and the environments look really great it's sort of this lush um really gloomy pixel art uh that just fits it really well the soundtrack is super good um i'm really excited to see where it goes and and what the story is it's got kind of like a sci-fi futuristic true detective feel um which Mm. i really really dig and um i i mean again i've only played an hour but if if the rest of the hours turn out as good as this first hour this could be a game of the year contender for me fuckers dang <laughs> you know honestly i was when i started hearing the buzz around this and citizen sleeper i was worried yeah. that one of you assholes was going to play this game and like it <laughs> because i really <laughs> just don't like text heavy video games yeah. and y'all assholes I, I don't have it on my list i don't really want to talk about it till the end of the year but i played 90 minutes of citizen sleeper mm. and so it's it's uh uh thank you for pushing me to play a game genre that i still don't like but uh it's good to hear you're liking norco it definitely got a lot of positive buzz when it when it came out yeah it's it's definitely it's text heavy but it weirdly so far it doesn't feel that way like i don't feel like it's overwhelming you with with story and stuff it's very it's you you can deliver it to yourself like piecemeal you can explore as much as you want and there's there's little details where it's like i probably don't need to know this but like there's one part where I was just randomly clicking and uh, you can choose to look at something from afar or like walk up to it if it's interactable. And I walked up to it and then there's another option to like do something more. And it uncovered this like hidden thing that I have no idea what to do with, but I know I'm going to come back to it at some point. And like, you could just totally miss that at some point. So it, I, I'm very, very drawn in and the music is just super good. Um very very much just creating a world that is new and different and, and something i want to be in so i nice. recommend cool. it based on the first the first hour and i will let you guys know when i beat it uh what what my thoughts are so it's so, not officially on the game of the year list yet not yet yeah i want to i want right. to get a little bit further in it but gotcha. i i think i think within two three hours of, of total play time i i'll probably know whether or not i want to put it on gotcha nice asshole <laughs> Wow, rude. Um, I yeah, I, I remember the next lander guys talking about that a lot. That they really like that, and also Citizen Sleeper. So I was wondering who was going to be the first to pick that up uh, on our team, and it was you, you bastard. Um, I got it. Ian, please tell me about these pizza loving turtles. That's right. I've been playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles shredders revenge uh this is a brand new game uh hit game pass last thursday i believe Uh, it's basically if you remember the tmnt uh 
16-bit era games as well as the arcade games. This is a new game in that style. And let me tell you, this is one of the best examples of a game that knows exactly what it should be. And it it nails it. And it is that 100 percent. Um, it's it's, you know, side scrolling beat em up. I believe you can have up to eight people playing at the same time. It's either six or eight. Um, and they've added whole new levels. There's like a slight, I don't want to call it an overworld, but like you're going through a stage and there's a boss at the end of the stage. And then it like pops you onto a map where you can go around to the next level, almost like, you know, super Mario world style in a way. Mm -hmm. And, um, there's, a, there's actually a decent amount of combat depth in it. Like they basically started off with this tutorial and the tutorial is like 15 pages, but Whoa. each page is like each page is like press X to punch. And then it's like press X plus forward to do this, then plus press X plus this to do that. And so like you can totally just play it as a beat em up. But then like towards the end, I started like figuring out, oh, I could like dash forward, back up and then like do like a diving spin shell attack at them. And it was a lot of fun. Um, it just looks really cool. It is. It is. If you ever thought, hey, why don't they make those games anymore? They did. They didn't try and 3D it. They didn't try and like they, they didn't 3D the art style. They didn't 3D the world. They didn't try and mix it up too much. They're just like, look, mm -hmm. we know what those games are. We're going to hit that aesthetic, that feeling, that style, that gameplay 110 percent. And folks, they did it. It's a lot of fun. However. And I'm curious if you guys have have genres like this as well. Beat em ups are one of especially side scrolling beat em ups are one of those genres that I play about 60 minutes of and then I go, cool, I've had my fill, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You have, you have any genres for you like that? I, I think that comes from at least for me, I'm, I'm the same way. I don't think I've ever like beaten a beat em up. And it's because mm -hmm. it's it's meant for or at least originally they were meant for arcades. You're not supposed to spend like eight hours playing one arcade yeah. you can if you want to but like normally yeah. you get like an hour or two and then it's you move on or, or you're you're given each each game 20 minutes so i definitely get that but how is there any indication of like how long the game is or or i i think reviewers were saying six to eight hours um okay. and it moves pretty quick so it's definitely not I don't want to say it's not paced like an arcade game because it's still probably like maybe 10, 15 minutes per episode, which is mm. like level and you get to the end. There's a boss fight. I think for me, it's just like I don't necessarily want to engage with the mechanical depths of a beat em up. And yeah. it's kind of like um, it's kind of like the gunk and Luigi's Mansion and stuff like, look, those games are great. I know they're well made, but I don't. I don't enjoy sucking in video games. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's fun for maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes, but at some point I'm like, okay, I'm fucking done with vacuuming. You're playing okay? the wrong kind of video games. <laughs> yeah. I usually watch so the sucking. Like... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's just like, it's like great mechanic. You've implemented it perfectly. It ain't for me. Mm -hmm. um, so that being said, look, it's on game pass. If you have game pass, Try it out. Maybe you'll love it. If you don't have Game Pass, buy Game Pass, then try it out. I'm sure you'll love it. Um, it's definitely worth a try. It plus just the charm on it. Like I can't, I can't, I can't stop talking about how like you boot that thing up, man, and it's a modern TMNT arcade game. It's just oozing in style. It's great. It's fantastic. I really love how they put that together. So if you're into beat em ups at all, or if you just want to give it a shot, try it out. It's also 10% off right now on Steam. Of the no, Game Pass special promotion. That's if you want to buy it. Um, wow. Yeah. I uh, wow. I, I'm a big Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, so I'm definitely gonna pick it up. Uh, I, I was just gonna say the only beat 'em up I think I've played entirely through is Castle Crashers. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. I feel like that was just like friends hanging out. Let's play through Castle Crashers, and I think it is fairly short. I can't really remember. Yeah. Um. But of genres like that, for me, is definitely like fighting games. Like I'll play a little yeah, bit fighting, of fighting games, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to engage with the depth of it, you know? Yeah, at yeah. all. And, um, and like, like a lot of that game, especially fighting games, a lot of the depth of the game is in the mechanical depth. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not there for the mechanical depth, there's not much there for right. you. In yeah. particular, fighting games. There's definitely multiple levels in TMNT you can have fun with, but, but anyways, um, there is another game I've been playing. Oh, shit. It's something that I, I've been feeling rather. I was thinking back on my time with Mass Effect last year. Oh, no. And I thought. 
that was a good thing for me. A lot of people consider me a contrarian, but I think <laughs> me going back and giving something a second chance was a good, like, growth, personal growth moment for me. And given that... <laughs> oh, no, you are not. <laughs> Folks, I have been playing Death no. Stranding. I knew it! Part. I knew it! <laughs> Folks, let me tell you, I am about eight or ten hours in this game. Fuck you. And it's pretty good. Fuck it's pretty you. Good. <laughs> Fuck look, you. But look, here's the problem. Here's the problem, though. I a part of this is on me, but I think the other part of it is that this game is so weird because I, I I'm just trying to like like the same thing happened to Dan Riker, like huge Kojima fan. And I've been trying to like he he had a really good way of expressing it for himself that I don't think fully applies to me, but some of it does. And he said when the game came out, he was still in the games industry. And so it's kind of that pressure of even though he wasn't necessarily reviewing the game, it's like there's game after game after game. This is the new game. You have to pick it up, play it, love it, move on. And that didn't work for him. I don't I think he only played like 10 or 15 hours of it. I think I don't even think he beat the game and he just hated it. Absolutely hated it. Um, And that was after him being hyped with all the all the pre press stuff and all that. But then he came back last year and he's not in the games industry anymore. He just has his like chill fire uh, video game podcast and he picked up the director's cut and he played it and he loved it. And he said for him, it was like it was just the more chill environment around the game and him playing it. And I think it's similar to me with Death Stranding, where, first of all, you're, you're coming off Metal Gear Solid 5, right? So you're expecting, like, a, like, mechanical True. combat-heavy game from One Kojima, of the greatest games though, ever made. Even though it wasn't presenting as that, that's kind of what you're expecting. Number two, you're expecting some, like, crazy good story in a way. But at the same time, it was so mysterious that it almost ended up like No Man's Sky in itself, where it, it was accidentally setting crazy expectations and it couldn't quite deliver on them. And number three is that Kojima is doing a lot of bonkers stuff with Death Stranding that is so outside of like a AAA norm that for you to just go, yeah, I'm going to pay 60 bucks. This is the new AAA Kojima game and plug that in and play it. And I played it for four or five hours that first time. It didn't land. And I don't think it's necessarily the game's fault. And it's not even the time that it came out. It's just like a lot of stuff around that game when it came out that set expectations so wrong. And it's not really anybody's fault. I, I don't know. I know you guys enjoyed it playing it. But did you feel that a little bit when you were playing it in terms of like expectations of the game versus the reality of it? So I I mean, I watched all the trailers when it when they came out. I, I was part of the hype train, but I actually didn't play it right when it came out. I think there was like a two or three month gap. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the hype around it had died and it was mostly people just talking about their experiences and I sort of let it die off. And then one day I just was like, all right, I'm just going to buy it and play it. So I bought it, downloaded it. And I think the fact that it was one of the few, the few games on my computer that I can play, I have a pretty old computer. Um, and it played so seamlessly and it felt like a next gen game to me. Like it was yeah. it was just like it it had that sheen of like care and um detail that was just so apparent from the outset. And I just remember falling into that world. And this is obviously this is after we went to Iceland and everything. And so much of it reminded me of like the land some of the yeah. landscape that we saw there. And I was like, this is really cool. And I started learning about the the photogrammetry stuff that they were doing to implement, which everybody does now. And um, I don't know. The story is bonkers. I've never played a Kojima game before. It's my first Kojima game because I didn't grow up with PlayStation or anything. So I knew it was going to be weird. It is weird. <laughs> um, but something about it just clicked with me. And I like the community aspect of it. Uh, the, the building for other people that you'll never see. Uh, was really cool and like I wasn't aware of that when I started so I remember playing and I was like why is there a bridge here and then it comes up with like that little uh, graphic mm -hmm. thing that says the person's name and I was like oh this is how they're doing multiplayer and just the fact that that's carried on from from that moment to the end of the game pretty much was great and I I just remember following it's not one of my favorite games of all time but I really liked it and it definitely stood out as a unique experience yeah. Yeah. And I think 
I, I'm trying to. I, I got. I feel like I got to pin the blame somewhere. <laughs> okay. And honestly, the more I think about it, that game was pretty much. It was pretty divisive, but it felt like it was more negative than positive reviews for that game. And I, and I feel like reviewers' responsibility is to like set expectations with the game. Not necessarily to say like, hey, this is what the game is X Y Z, but to say like, hey. Here's what I think of the game and reasons why in terms of this is what the game is really like and what it's trying to go for, whether it succeeds or not. And it feels like a lot of those reviews failed because for me, when I picked up the game and I started playing it, I knew a little bit because I've been playing the reviews, but it was still off putting. And especially like those first three or four hours are slow. And then the reviews are like, look, it's just boring. The whole game is just fetch quests. And you're like, great. So it's going to be this three hours for the next 30 hours. Of course, I'm going to put it down. But if the reviews had talked more about like, you know, like you like you said, the, the innovative multiplayer aspects, the fact that the fetch quests um the, the, they start to have like really interesting story elements to them. There's really interesting locales, lots oh, no, of cool Ryan. design. Yeah. Pizza. And and the fact that the fetch quests, like, like the game is trying to make BTs and mules scary, but they are pretty much just like piss easy from the start. And, and even if you do get caught by one, it's very inconsequential. So it's one of those things where like, if the reviews had like properly set those expectations, and having those expectations like two years later, like I know what the game is. Now I'm going to give it a shot and I know, hey, I need to at least get like five or six hours in to give it a chance. I I, I am enjoying the game. So like, again, I'm not trying to place the blame all on our viewers, but it really feels like it really feels like people didn't know what to expect with that game. Reviewers picked it up. It didn't meet their expectations and therefore they panned it. And that kind of bled into the mainstream and tainted the pool so people were picking the game up like me getting two or three hours into it and going well it's not going to get any better because the reviewers didn't say it gets any better um but yeah. I, I, it's a slow news week so let me keep talking about death stranding well what hold, well, you, I, you let me explain what about what about will's yeah. experience with it? first Fuck of all well. I, knew it was, I bought it i loved it because i remember we bought it pretty much the same time right because we were both looking at the reviews coming out and we were like this game's getting panned and we were like, should we still spend the money on this? It, it's funny because the, re the the reasons those reviewers said they didn't like the game is the reason I picked it up is because I wanted, like, people kept calling it a walking simulator, this and that. And I was like, you know, that sounds kind of fun. Like, I could do something yeah. where I'm just, like, I like, like, gone home to some extent. Uh, I'm trying to think of other walking simulators. Like, Dear Esther, um... What's the one in the giant house? Um, Gone home. No, there's the one in the complicated house, and she has all the brothers and sisters and all that stuff. Dear but, Esther. Yeah, fuck off. That one, I, I, of Edith Finch. yeah, what remains of Edith Finch. Um, okay. Like, I like those kinds of games. So I was like, hey, listen, it's Kojima. I'm already on board. I'll check out this weird thing that he's doing. So I, like, really enjoyed it. Like Kyle said, I, I fell in love right away. Um like I remember just that one time you come over the crest of the hill and low roar plays yep. and it's just yep. like this yeah. great moment where you're like, yeah. And also the hype of us just have gone to Iceland and it was like exactly the same. And Iceland yeah. is what inspired Kojima to make this whole game anyways. It's like, it just lined up perfectly for me. Yes, the story is stupid at points, extremely I, stupid. I, I don't, actually I'm really I, into honestly, it. I'm really into it so far. Uh, no, I, I, I just mean it. like names story. and character, like some stuff. Not not Look, like I'm going to say something. Kojima it's going to sound Kojima. racist. No, it's Kojima being Japanese. If you watch oh, any totally. fucking anime, they do they the anime can be great, but they are terrible at pacing and laying out plot lines and character motivations and naming shit <laughs> like oh, they're just yeah. bad at those things yeah. no you know? and again it's bad in the way like it's not bad like cats it's bad like cats the real musical um so it's like <laughs> you're there for the experience not for the the, the I, grammy I award i understand what you're talking about yeah you get what i mean um <laughs> Sorry, I just watch cats. Um, anyways, uh, so I like really enjoyed all those aspects of it. Plus, the gameplay, I absolutely adored the gameplay. Is yeah. going to pick up the stuff, walking, setting up climbing points to get up to a thing. Like, I would just put stuff in front of me to, just to try to get up it. Um, 
commandeering vehicles. There was a good while I had a truck. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a mule truck that I was just using. And, like That's me You right weren't now. supposed to have yeah. a truck. And I just stole a mule truck and was using it and going around with stuff. Um, again, you say the locations are really cool. There's that one place with like the wind farm. And you like go down yeah. into the forest and like all this stuff. So At it's the beginning. Just, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. just so neat and 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 yeah, all the things you guys said, I, I absolutely love it. And you're making me want to go play it again because um, I haven't checked out the director's cut stuff or like the new secret stealth missions and everything. Um, I don't, I know to transfer my save, I have to go get it in the PS4 version, so I don't want to do that um, because that's stupid. You don't want to start from the start though, because I know, but I think you're I- forgetting how much fluff that uh, look, look j- if i may real quick give you an example of fluff this happens all the effing time you're at a delivery terminal you're talking to the person and they're like hey maybe you can go deliver this for me and you're like sure and then it dumps you out of the cutscene, dumps you out of the terminal yeah. and then you get a phone call from somebody saying hey sam that that orders <laughs> at the delivery terminal that you're standing right in front of and you kicked <laughs> me out of like there's just so much stupid fluff in it like that that i don't think you want to replay the yeah game. <laughs> Um, and also just the aesthetic and world building in that game, I think is so cool and sleek and the, I have so many stickers and I have the void if tampered tape. Um, it's just, ah, oh, it's so good. I love it yeah, so much. It's great design. I, I, I'm not going to do it, but I know you were talking about doing a death stranding cosplay and i was thinking like every time i see him i'm like holy you can make his whole fucking harness out of foam core and basically have like 15 pound cosplay that is like 10 feet yeah. tall worth of packages and stuff i have a small nook of this office is stuff i've collected for the final like build yeah. like like not big like i haven't bought big things but it's like little things that i'm like oh this will be perfect to like attach to the suit and like patches and stuff but i haven't made that that i have also a folder of 3d files. you have a 3d printer too yeah <laughs> so it's just like like because I'm, I'm thinking like the best way to do a death stranding cosplay is you have to be carrying a ton of shit on you yeah, yeah. and the only way to do that is like foam core and 3d print it because if you if you try and buy like 10 pelican cases even if they're empty you're gonna be you're yeah. gonna be swamped those babies right? are getting cheaper too um <laughs> uh, i keep try- i have like trackers on them those babies to try to see if i can buy one uh should have got the collector's edition. Are you are you going to New York Comic Con at all? I mean, I could. Okay, because that that's where I first saw. I don't know if I sent you guys pictures, but the year before it came out at New York Comic Con, they had a huge Death Stranding like standee, but it was hyper realistic Norman Reedus with like individual oh. hairs had been like punched into his face and everything, and I got pictures standing next to it, and that I think that was the moment that I was like. I need to get this game just because of like how detailed this stupid thing in New York Comic Con is, and it yeah. was uh, it lived up to the hype. But yeah, I I don't think I and I've been to New York Comic Con a couple times since. I've never seen a cosplay of it, like of someone doing it. So that would be really cool. Yeah, yeah I'd be, it'd be really funny. I, yeah, I I I would do that. Uh, let's set a goal, New York Comic Con. I'll get it done. Do it. We'll be I, porters. Um, I will. I will say, this game is very is very weird though in that like mechanically like game design wise like this is a triple a indie game like there were a lot of people saying like how was kojima able to do this and make it look this good in this amount of time and the more i play the game i realize like i see all the shortcuts he took you know like um all the people a lot of their animation is static you know (laughs) like they don't have to walk around their hollow displays um some of the some of the voice acting like edgar wright is in the game but not as a voice just as a model you know so it's 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 shortcuts like that the other thing is that like this this is an indie game disguised as triple a and that the mechanics are very simplistic the worlds are even simplistic like they're not even that big of hub worlds there's maybe a couple of locations that a lot of empty space between them and like mule animations mule mechanics mule camps are just kind of copy pasted not in a bad way but in a way that there is so much like efficiency in how this game has been designed that is then plastered over and hidden by just making the game look fantastic by doing a lot of cutaway here's an animation by doing yeah. putting money and time into the cutscenes and the stories and having like a very comprehensive ui design and all the aesthetics are futuristic etc so it's one of those things where it's it's basically an indie game and honestly i don't think the game mechanics are that good 
because the act of just running around delivering packages is not really that satisfying. But the way that it brings it all together with the story and the world and the presentation and everything does make it a good package. Like I was just thinking, you guys ever play that game um, Grow Home? I forget what the first one is, but like you, you're climbing plants and you're doing different stuff like that game is, is a lot of fetch quests. It's like, go over here, get that. Okay. Now you need to get up on top of that mountain and get that. Now you need to somehow cross this ravine. It's very similar to death stranding in that way, but it's so much better in terms of like the actual gameplay mechanics, because what you are, what you're available and able to do and how you're interacting with that. It's all like, Oh, I need to get to that mountaintop. Maybe I'll climb up here and I'll try and glide and catch this current and all this crazy stuff. And it feels so much better, but I don't want to say it's not as good a game as death stranding, but it's not a triple A game. And the reason why is death stranding has lesser mechanics, but it's just beautified in bigger, 10 bigger scale. Yeah, 10,000 different ways, but, but like not bigger scale in terms of like what you're doing, just in terms of like all the menu animations dialed up to 11, all the all the animations, all the sound, cinematics, etc. So it's one of those things where like I really appreciate his game design here because he had a very comprehensive world design and story and he's able to present that on a limited budget and still squeeze enough gameplay in that it carries you forward between the the, the story beats yeah um so yeah i'm really enjoying it i'm about halfway across the u.s i'll probably finish it what do you guys think is the average play time i i, I feel like i've heard 40 hours but it can't be no. 40 hours no I, I don't i did probably like 22 I have, I have 40 hours 42 hours logged but i know probably 25 30 is where i finished like somewhere around yeah. there okay i really i i so i did it in two different play sessions uh i played it a bunch when it came out and then i stopped uh and then kyle picked it up and finished it and then i was like oh i should go back and finish it so then I oh so you didn't like the game gotcha uh, okay no, because, I forget because I play all games in two days or less, except yeah. for Assassin's Creed. What so. I'm trying to think, of what came out at the same time? There's something else uh, like that came out, and I just like uh, went there was on. outer outer wild. wild. Yeah, maybe there's something. I know there's something. Um, but you hated but, outer wild, so I should fucking shut up. You I idiot. love that joke so much. I hate that joke. Uh, it's not true, folks. We're going to the news. Shut up. You're not talking anymore. You're done talking. I'll try and finish it. I'm still playing it. Yeah, you finish her. Uh, anyways, we're going to play the news theme. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was rude. Uh, we're going to play the news theme. CPU, 100%, folks. Here we go. Here's the news. It's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up, news? But now there's more to the song, so you can sing along, and it won't bore you, though, unlike Factorio. Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian, and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local chat. Great job, Zach. So good. Great job. Uh, Folks, uh, not too much news this week, which is why we spent so much Freaking time talking about video games. Um, first up on the docket here, a funny little news story, I like to call it, because Stadia is funny. Um, apparently, um, The Quarry hit Game of the Year contender The Quarry, uh, and also High on Life, a uh, not hit game that was shown off at Xbox's conference? Yes. Yes. Uh, from uh, Rick and Morty, uh, what's his name? Justin, Justin Roiland. Justin Roiland uh, were supposed to originally be on Stadia. I don't know why my voice is cracking so much. It was like you were doing a Justin Roiland impression. Oh, jeez, oh, Rick, I don't know. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. This I've never been to this website before. Who Axios. is this? Oh, I know it's Steven Totillo's. Totillo. It's, uh... <laughs> I know him. Is it they're doing some it's just not an article it's literally just a list which is one of those like big brain bad ideas in a way you know it's like <laughs> people don't read articles they just skim it so what if we just present it as a list to skim and it's like eh, it doesn't quite work but yeah he's from kotaku used to be oh no i know i i'm aware of him i just didn't know what axios was so yeah it says here neither the game's uh 
have been officially associated with Stadia. Um, the games were Google's connections to help fill out a picture of what Stadia could have offered. Uh, if Google hadn't abandoned its ambitions in 2021 to create a gaming platform to rival PlayStation and Xbox, who knows what might have happened. Uh, that's interesting. It's funny, like, you don't often, I feel like you never really got that from things. Like, you always get them years and years later. Uh, but just being, like, blatantly being like, yeah, these were gonna, these were supposed to be for this thing, and then that thing failed. Um, like, I wonder how many Ouya things were for the Ouya and then didn't. Yeah, but I mean, I think, I think the thing behind this story is what we kind of already knew but hasn't really been formally announced, which is that Stadia is dead, pretty much. Yeah, totally. It is still viable. You can still totally purchase it as a service, but their initial push to have Stadia-exclusive titles that are big, huge, they would have never let the quarry, they never would have let Squanch Games go if they were still planning to say, hey, these are some stadia exclusives that you have to get on the platform to play up for to play. And uh, I think this is uh, Google's kind of been doing that for a while. It didn't take long for them to turn around and rumors were flying that they're looking to offload Stadia tech to basically turn it from a subscription service into a tech service for other companies trying to spin up subscription gaming. And this is just further proof that Stadia's DOA. Uh, Google's going to it's going to be another five years before Google officially end of life. It, but it's basically dead already. It's dead or alive. Beach bikini. Here here, Good riddance. Folks. Um, next up, Tony Hawk in a live stream, I believe, um, said uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater three and four were canned it's due to Activision's yeah, Blizzard's. Dude, if there's yeah. a three and four or whatever, oh god, you know, why? Who is me. who is talking? What are you playing? That what are you doing? Oh, it just auto played him. Playing. Sorry, no, it was me. It was me. Um, man, you got so alarmed there. <laughs> what are you no, what are you playing was, what are you doing i was screaming i was screaming because i just opened it and i was like i hope it's I, not me and i was i was like i have really not me i muted I the website i hate auto playing websites i'm looking at you certain website i work for GameStop. um <laughs> gamestop uh apparently sorry I, I was interrupted by tony hawk himself uh that the three and four remasters remakes uh were uh canned after blizzard's acquisition of vicarious visions who developed the one and two remakes um according to him himself on live stream on monday uh he said he had briefly says action had briefly taken pitches from other studios but allegedly wasn't happy with any of them um it says here quote that was the plan even up until release of one and two we were doing three and four and the vicarious got kind of absorbed and then they were looking for other developers and then it was over end quote uh, which kind of sucks. Um, listen, I get um, it. Totally sucks. Totally sucks. Vicarious Visions, they did a fantastic job. And yeah. they did a great job with Crash Bandicoot and Insane Trilogy. And they were doing a great job. And now they're just stuck on existing Blizzard games and initiatives, according to Activision Blizzard, which means all their bad projects they keep going forward with. Yep. Um, yeah, because even I bought Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, 1 plus 2, out, purely out of nostalgia. I think I have three hours yeah. in it. And I got my fill. Great. I'll, I could go back to it whenever, but I don't feel like like I would pay that sixty dollars again for for more of it. Um, yeah, that that sucks. Um, and it sold. It sold well too. One and two. Very well. It sold yeah. a million copies within the first two weeks. A skate game in twenty twenty. That's a skate crazy. remake. Skate yeah. remake. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely wild. Skate four. Come on. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's interesting. Uh, it's it's rare you see someone so candid about that, but he's also not in the industry, so it's just like, who cares? Might as well talk about yeah. it, you know. Um, <clears throat> next here on the list, Alien Isolation's team has been working on a sci-fi FPS for four years. Um, Creative Assembly, known for their Total War games and their incredible game, Alien Isolation, uh, a game that perfectly captures the essence of the original film. I might add. Um, and, but atmosphere we gotta be clear here we gotta be clear here that is from creative assembly who is mostly known for the total war series so they they stepped out a lot to do alien isolation yeah that's how i began and the sentence ian i don't pay attention to you uh Apparently. but i will tell you what i pay attention to which is the news this was a hot hot scoop 
until yesterday when it was confirmed creative assembly themselves announced hyenas which is a new multiplayer shooter uh it is not a battle royale they put out a tweet today where they were like guess what it's not a battle royale and everybody was like yay uh this is a pvevp which makes it sound kind of like uh tarkov or dark zone or uh the hunt showdown um it's got some nice style on it your pirates who have infiltrated you know like a, a space station or a spaceship and you're basically running around in a, a group of three there's 15 people in the match split into five teams of three and you're stealing treasures from the spaceship trying to escape with that loot but at the same time fighting each other and fighting uh npcs uh, this sounds like it could be fun i i'm really glad there is this style of game but it's not grim dark serious like escape from tarkive hunt shutdown etc like this looks like it could be a lot of fun what do you guys think jake's gonna be happy there's a goo gun i was just gonna say they definitely took a, took a hint for prey um i i am interested i'll play it i will say i think this the actual style like the look of the game the characters very much reminds me of like Fortnite, Saints Row, kind of like that poppy, uh, colorful, like saturated yeah. look, which I am getting tired of. Uh, it, I, 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 I think it's just talk about oversaturated. I think the market is just oversaturated with games that look like that. Um, but it's Creative Assembly. We will see. Um, they've got. I'm just watching one of the trailers here, and it says merch, and then it showed a big like Sonic bobblehead sort of thing, and I don't know why that's in there but it is so uh we'll, we'll see what we'll see what happens yeah i, I think yeah. it looks cool um it's i you know i did not even notice that this was connected to that i saw hyenas in a slack today and i was also working on several things um so that's interesting i i didn't realize they announced what they were working on um i, I think <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry i have to, i have to point this out so i put both these news stories in here and normally we have a line break between news stories, but I put the second news story directly underneath it and Will kept going in there and adding the line break. And I kept bumping it back together to say, these are the same story. And he kept adding the line Just... break. And to be clear, the, the first line says alien isolations team. And the second line ends with team behind alien isolation. Well, so these also, were cryptic headlines. It says, also it say games radar and IGN. Every <laughs> time, every episode I've ever we've ever had related stories, you put a dash and you put it underneath. I've done that every single time. Yeah, it's fair. I tried to indent it. Google Drive you can't indent on the mobile. Well I'll stop I'll using take, mobile. Put it on the TV. On the computer. <laughs> I'm like to use the TV to update the Google Doc. <laughs> life was better without a remote I'm sorry i just like i just had to call it up because i kept being like these are grouped and you kept coming in and adding a space <laughs> between them and i was like no they're grouped <laughs> i don't care you anymore <laughs> um ian uh this next story i know is very near and dear to you uh politically <laughs> I, I let's get serious for a second here it's just some really sad news one of my personal political heroes <laughs> has confessed to being a pay-to-win scum gamer that's right uh in an interview with the the verdict i don't even know what this show is a libertarian Ted's, show <laughs> ted cruz says he is quote a gamer and reveals his strategy quote you can buy in-game items and make your character stronger or get advantages <laughs> i'll confess i buy it because it's a lot more fun if suddenly your character has a lot of great stuff that would take you six to twelve months to build up there's so many interesting things in here if i may number one this is the exactly the kind of scummy behavior you would expect from ted cruz where he basically doesn't earn things he just uses money to buy it but it's hilarious that he he says i'll confess like he knows he's doing the wrong thing i know <laughs> like this is this is like ultra capitalist to basically say hey, if you have enough money you can just buy your way out of it he should be supporting this he should be saying it's great but he's almost shooting himself in the foot where he's saying like hey these fucking capitalists in gaming have gone too far and they're manipulating me it's, it's, it's like when i commit a weird. crime i can just pay my way out of it it's great yeah 
No, but he's saying, like, I'll admit I paid my way out of the crime. I know it's bad. <laughs> it's like, no. She's okay. No, you need to... You need to say more often that it's bad that this is happening in gaming and every other oh. industry out there right now. He's the judgment Why? of like a six-year-old. I love it. I know. He's the type Why aren't who, you would, this? who would fully <laughs> pay a scalper for a PS5 and be like, thank you. <laughs> I got it. At I know it's bad, place. but I got, it. I got my bad. PlayStation it's... of what the market value held. All right. It's like, why don't you have the same sentiment towards the Texas power grid when they up <laughs> things because of their own bad infrastructure going under? It's like, I know it's bad, but I had to pay that for the electricity. It's you, you asshole. People just need to make more money. They just need to make more money. That's just our Ted Cruz impression. This is kind of like the San Diego, the, the, the congressman from San Diego that got caught for misappropriating uh, campaign funds. And a large portion of it was like thousands of dollars spent on steam purchases. <laughs> that laundering. Um, damn. Jesus. That's what a fuckhead. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> next up. I don't care about overwatch Two. Who wants it? Nobody. Nobody wants it. It's, I, it's insane. I know because he like like let me take you through the timeline and tell you. Okay, look here's the here's the headline and then I'll paint the pretty picture for you. Overwatch two. It's been announced that Overwatch two is going to replace the original game. So when Overwatch two comes out, it takes the spot of Overwatch one in the launcher. You can no longer play Overwatch one. It's just Overwatch two. Overwatch two is free to play, so it's not like you have to pay to keep playing Overwatch one, etc. But it's it's like Overwatch one. Very successful, but then they started shooting themselves in the foot by focusing too much on esports and tuning the game to esports level, which kind of uh, ruined it for 99% of the, the player base. Then they decide we've got to do something about this. How about we announce Overwatch 2 and we say it's going to have PvE content? And that's pretty much it. So it's basically just the same as Overwatch 1, but Overwatch 2 with some PvE content. People got upset at that. They said, why don't you just support the game you have now? If you're not building a brand new game, all you're doing is adding a new mode. The PvE content isn't even going to be in Overwatch 2 at launch. They basically scaled back what Overwatch 2 is. It feels like it's just a content update for Overwatch 1. But all along, they said, it's okay, because if you if you own Overwatch 1, you can play with Overwatch 2, and it'll be cross-play between them. So even though we're calling it Overwatch 2, it's not really. It's more of a content update in a way. And now they're just pulling that back even further and basically saying, we're calling it Overwatch 2, but it's replacing the original game. They, they it's just so stupid like all they needed i i don't know all they wanted to do was strengthen and grow their player base right and there's kind of two yeah. ways to do that number one is you fix the issues in your game as they currently exist that are driving players away and number two you add content and fanfare to bring in new players and the first one they have it done because there's still all sorts of balance issues with the game and the second one the new content it's not even coming with Overwatch 2 because the PvE is delayed till next year. It's not going to be there on launch. So it's it's just a very... I, I They feel like all they have to do is slap a 2 on it and people will go out and buy it because they're idiots like they did with Destiny 2. You know, yeah. it's basically the same game, very little new, but because it's got a 2 on it, it's going to bring in the same sales as the original, if not more. And that's not going to happen. It. This is just such a stupid, like, backpedal all the way down to take the two off of it take the two off of it this is just overwatch call it overwatch 2.0 because it's a big content update release etc but stop calling it overwatch 2 it's not a sequel do you think this is just like a scummy i mean the entire thing is kind of scummy on blizzard's part and part but like what's the player base of overwatch these days like a couple million if that's probably still per, pretty big per, per day like three million maybe do you think they're <laughs> this is so stupid um do you think that they're turning off Overwatch so that when Overwatch 2 releases, they can be like, we had 3 million? Weirdly, we had the same number of people that were playing <laughs> Overwatch that are now playing Overwatch 2 on the first day. So, like, it's a it's a big success. Yeah, like, I think I think it's half that, but I think also half of it is them realizing, oh, it's going to be confusing going from Overwatch 1, which is a paid product, to Overwatch 2, which is free to play, and we're telling them there's cross-play. Isn't that going to be confusing? Oh, we'll just fix it by getting rid of the original. So I think it's half a fix, half of a, we have to force the player base into Overwatch 2. Yeah. I, I wonder uh, how quickly the Overwatch 1 servers, like, fan servers pop up. Uh, so people can keep playing Overwatch 1. Probably never, honestly. 
because I they, mean, they've never supported private private servers. Right, but I mean, they never supported private servers on World of Warcraft, and plenty of people made classic servers for that. So I can just see That's it because people are already pissed off about them changing the five v five, and if now they're forcing that, I feel like. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. The yeah. minor changes there are in Overwatch 2 are now going to be forced. Yeah, which is crazy. And also, like, if someone walked up to me and said, hey, give me your, like, if Hell Let Loose 2 came out or whatever, and, like, give me your Hell Let Loose 1 disc, break it in half, now you can never play that again. Like, I'd be like, what? Like, I own that. What, what do you... Yeah, like I feel like that is a pl- new platform to open yourself up, where it's like, "Hey, we own, I own this game, and now you're taking it away from me." Um, yeah, like sort of thing. This, this uh, game is like, like the history of Overwatch. It's like the opposite of Rainbow Six Siege or Final Fantasy XIV, where they had such a strong launch. They had an incredible game at launch, and it was good for a year or two. But they have just slowly been the death by a million cuts where they have just constantly slowly undermined that game to the point where now they can't even sustain it with a sequel on the horizon. Like there is, it's, it's like the opposite of like zero excite of excitement or, or promise with a sequel. It's people feeling like the sequel is ruining the franchise before it's even come out. Um, and that's just crazy because most games have a bad launch and they get better or they have a good launch and they kind of maintain that, but they never really get better. You know, yeah. something like like DayZ, fantastic game when it came out, but it never really got better, but it never got worse. Whereas Overwatch has just gotten worse and worse. And this is their big effort to kind of wipe the slate clean and start fresh. And they ain't doing it. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I was never an Overwatch player. I'm not going to be an Overwatch player. Um, it's a shame so. it's, it is a fun game it, it's it fun was game. so fun i i started playing about six months before they implemented really dumb changes and those six months were like i was so obsessed with playing it was so much fun it's a great game it, it is um well leave it to me to figure out my cpu issues right when we're ending um turns oh, out well. running the three cameras of us full screen on my top monitor was uh was running me at a full hundred oh. percent i minimized the tab and now i'm running at a cool 39 percent of my cpu uh, so i think that's the issue i think there's something wrong with that monitor i don't know i i don't know there's so many issues going no, on in this i world. mean that's that sounds like obs ninja plus chrome <sighs> issues yeah you full I screen so. it it's gonna hog yeah, yeah, and three separate camera feeds all all changing dynamically on a extra wide monitor, I think is the other thing. Um, yeah. So um, I'm going to hit the outro music and then we're going to get out of here. Uh, folks, thank you so much for uh, joining me, Ian and Kyle. It was lovely having both of you. Um, folks, you can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. You know what? That'll bring you straight to a link tree that'll bring you to places like, um, I don't know, our Twitch, or I don't know, our YouTube, or I don't know, local chat website where you can subscribe to the podcast and perhaps a merch site sometimes um that would be interesting wouldn't it uh folks so go there and you can do all that i just realized we should put each of our socials on there as well so people can follow us that's a really good idea because you can kind of differentiate those and put our pictures next to it we can use those ones from landon put those on there that'd be perfect um folks uh we talked about all sorts of things today but what we didn't talk about is how much i love every single one of you uh thank you for watching this thank you for tuning in halucha i look forward to the clips and i look forward to uh you talking in our discord server and ian uh you suck and i can't believe you're playing death stranding and you bastard but i'm actually so happy it's like when your best friend says uh they actually are in love with you so <laughs> 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 I didn't, I didn't have that going anywhere. Oh, Kyle, I meant to mention to you, your Envato payment to me on Venmo uh, was public and had a eggplant plus pride flag. And my friend texted me a picture of it and said, excuse me? <laughs> I said it, it was for work. Me that Venmo is- <laughs> Fuck Venmo. <laughs> it was pretty great. Oh, well, 
We'll see y'all next week. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>